Hello gaming channel, if this is the only channel of mine that you subscribe to, this might well be the first time you've seen my face, so there's that. I recently got back from Gen Con, the largest gaming convention in the country, where I made a bet, we bet lunch, uh, with my friend John that I could win the first Commander tournament that I entered with a tuned up version of the Chromat deck I featured on here not too terribly long ago. Now we did other things while we were there, including breaking the Gen Con 2015 giant Jenga record for tallest tower with my friend David. If that sounds interesting to you, there's a link in the description to a vlog on my main channel about, you know, the convention as a whole, but here I want to get into the nitty-gritty of competitive commander. Like I said, I made a pretty headstrong bet with my friend John that I could win the first commander tournament with my Chromat deck, and it was kind of half-joking. The stakes were pretty low. We were only betting lunch, but I, I was still pretty confident going in, and here's why. I think that most commander players fall into a couple of different categories. Either people who primarily play another format but have commander decks as, uh, you know, a more social option, or people who play commander out of necessity, right? People who don't have a local gaming store to go to and Commander is the only format they can convince their group of friends to, you know, play regularly. I am of a privileged class of Elder Dragons insofar as I play in New York City. Like, this is my primary format, but not out of necessity. This city is just big enough to support a vibrant and diverse metagame for, you know, a relatively young format. I think most players' conception of what's possible in the Commander universe is limited by the relatively narrow number of people they play with regularly, or like, the one store where they're able to play. Where in New York, I can play at the 20-sided store, at the Uncommons, at King's Games, at Dual Zone, at Montezy Comics, or any number of people's apartments. Like on our Facebook group, there are people looking for games pretty much every night. So knowing that I go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best in New York, I think Frank Sinatra said it best. If I can. Make it there. Still, this was all conjecture going in. I mean, for all I knew, Boise, Idaho might have a super developed commander metagame and some corn-fed Maelstrom Wanderer player could just blow me out of the water. The first good decision I made was in my deck selection. Like I said, I chose to play a tuned up version of my Chromat deck, figuring that competitive players would bring super scary looking commanders and that I could next level them by playing something that looked less scary. Don't get me wrong, five color is always scary, but even experienced players subconsciously prioritize threats that are immediately visible, right? Chromat in and of herself is not the threat. Players are nine times out of ten gonna go after the Narset player first. And oh boy did they! There were Narset decks everywhere, and all but one of the games I played against Narset uh, went like this. I begin ramping, dirtling, doing some innocuous looking things. Narset gets cast, maybe countered once, but eventually sticks to the board. I continue, you know, building things that are confusing but their opponents aren't quite sure what I'm getting at, and then Narset swings, and all of my opponents tap out and dump their hands to deal with that, leaving me a window to combo off, and you know, I, I inevitably would. The only Narset game that did not follow that exact script was, spoiler alert, the championship round of the tournament. I made it that far. I was 2-0, there was a Sharoon deck that was 2-0, Narset was 1-1, and, one, and uh, Hazazan was 1-1. One one. Very cool commander. At this point in the tournament, I had developed a reputation. My opponents had caught wind that there was a Chromat deck that comboed out of nowhere, so they worked together to neuter me early. My opponents swung at me first, they got me down to 20 life pretty quickly, the Sharoon player used Sword of Fire and Ice to ping my druids to would normally be untapping my lands. So. And on top of that, I just wasn't drawing the cards I needed to. In my opening hand I was counting on it being a burgeoning game, but uh, I stopped drawing lands pretty quickly and instead drew redundant effects like exploration, you know, salt in the wound. The table eventually realized that I was not a threat, so they diverted their attention back to Narset, except this time uh, it appeared as though Narset would actually overpower everyone. The Sharoon player cast a Planar Cleansing, and over the course of two turns I was able to recover very quickly, but in a way that seemed innocuous. I dropped an Exploration, Extra Land Drops, a Market Festival on one of my lands, and a Druid to untap that same land. All the while, Narset knocked out Hazazan, took an extra turn, and knocked out uh, Sharoon. Then I had one turn before I was dead, and I only had like two cards in my hand. I put my hand on my deck, I said, big money, big money, no whammies, no whammies, and stop! 
and it was a time stretch. That was the first point in the entire game where I thought I had even the slightest chance of winning the game, and I did it without ever passing turn back to the Narset player. I hit another time walk effect, and I actually did it with Chromat Commander damage, which my deck never does. So in short, I made it to the finals by pretending to not be a threat, and I won the finals by like actually not being a threat. Lunch was delicious that day, John. Thank you so much. That was my Gen Con experience in a nutshell. Thank you very much for watching. I got some sweet new cards while I was there, so I have A, some new deck techs coming up, and B, some updates to decks I have shown you previously. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't already. There's more content over there. Please click it and watch it, and uh, bye. <laughs>